Welcome back to the Coin Shop Podcast alongside my brother, Matthew Duncan. This is Kenny Duncan Jr. And we are literally worn out from the ANA. I mean, it was uh, just trying to get everything back in order. Right. And trying to get back on schedule has just been nuts. Yeah. ANA, a full inventory. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. we, yeah. So uh, we decided to do an inventory during the ANA. Um, probably need to think that one through a little bit better, but it still worked out. Oh, it worked out good. Yeah, yeah. it worked out good. Yeah, it worked out really good. Um, we have Jeff Garrett on today. Um, guys, if you know Jeff Garrett, Jeff Garrett is numismatic royalty. He's one of, you know, probably on the Mount Rushmore. Um, he is an author. Um, he is a coin dealer extraordinaire, also just a visionary and a beast in the business. And we're glad to have him on. Jeff, how are you, sir? I'm doing great. I'm, I'm kind of like you. I'm uh, trying to recuperate from eight days in Pittsburgh. Man. So, uh, how was your ANA? If if you were to if you were to give me your you know thirty seconds to a minute uh, uh, recap, what would you say? Um, I had a great show. It was uh, I got there on Saturday. I started showing coins on Sunday, and I had to chase people away the following Saturday when I was trying to put coins away. So it was <laughs> it was busy the entire time. Um, I got you know I, I accomplished everything I hoped to. Uh, Pittsburgh, I think uh, I like the city, uh, you know, and I really, really, I don't know if you have, you guys noticed it, but it's really a, an impressive bourse space because it has no pillars in it. And when you kind of go up and see it, it's like this big expanse. And it was, uh, it, it was, in, it was, uh, you know, astounding to see it with that many dealers all in one giant uh, view. I think it's kind of gave the coin business that made it seem bigger. Yeah, so you know, steel buildings, or you're in the steel city. They use yeah. a lot of inf the infrastructure. You're right; it has this huge, amazing, open feeling, and um, you know, you could see one side to the other. There weren't any dark spots. It was well lit. Yeah. Um, it just felt more high end. Yeah, look, right. Yeah. Um, and like Jeff said, you walk across this catwalk, and you've got glass windows on both sides, so you can see both sides of the bourse floor, and it was just packed. And That's it was, cool. It's yeah. great to see. Great for the hobby. Um, hey, Jeff. Did, what do you like when you get ready? So, I mean, listen, guys, this is Jeff Garrett, right? I mean, you've been in the business for 40 plus years. Um, how do you get ready for an ANA? Like, give us a little look into your preparation, like your company preparation. You know, you, you have your hands in a few different shops um, and, and a few different things going on. It, without getting too involved, maybe give us yeah. a little idea and insight into how Jeff Garrett gets ready for an ANA. Well, I'll tell you, this is it's just kind of interesting because I've told some people, I, I think the coin business is a lot of psychological warfare. And uh, it, it really it really is true because it's just you've got to play the game right. And in my opinion, uh, people you know, like for a month or two before the show, I don't even take coins to coin shows. I just go to buy coins and I accumulate because if, if I took coins to, let's say, a, a little Cincinnati show, there'd be some guys walking around who might sell one, might sell two or three. But when if you save your coins and if people think you've got fresh coins and you're uh, you know you've been it's what makes ANA special so many people do that where they you know they're coming there with fresh boxes of coins so my idea is that when I get there I want to have fight people off to look at my coins because they know I've been saving coins and they're I call it like in heat they're in heat to buy my coins no doubt and and that that psychology works for me I, I kind of do that for most of the major coin shows I, I don't take coins to coin shows uh, leading up to big conventions, I save up stuff. I call all my clients. Hey, what do you got for sale? We got a big show. Um, I'm scouring thing. I I think I went to A and A with 20 double row boxes of coins, and I came home with about four or five. So yeah. um, I was there for I was there for battle, and that was yeah. and that works because people when they were there, you know, it was like you. I mean, there people. I sold you coins there. I mean, everybody's eager to buy. People at A and A are there to do business. And it's, agree. It's, it's, that's what it's for. And that's kind of my battle plan is to save up fresh coins for us. And I want people to know that that's, that's why I've got. And, um, and the, that, that strategy works this time. It, I guess it's like going all in and poker. It'll work every time till it doesn't, but it's, it's, yeah. it's, uh, you know, as long as the market doesn't crash two weeks before a and I'll be in good shape, but, uh, I've never, this was my 49th a and a in a row. Wow. wow. And, uh, I've never had a bad one. So I, uh, it would be statistically uh, difficult to have a bad one. So I'm, I'm pretty happy that uh, it's going to be good next year. You know, that's amazing because we, you know, we did take a similar approach. We brought 20 boxes, everything was priced, ready to go, similar to yours, you know, um, you know, and just get in line and, <clears throat> excuse me, get in line and let's, you know, let's see, let's see where things fall. But I was, um, excuse me, <clears throat> 
I was very impressed with your inventory. I mean, you had a lot of fresh coins, um, a lot of coins that you know still had meat in them, still had some you know some skin left on them. Um, it was nice to go through your coins. I had never, I don't think I've ever really gotten an early shot there. Just just yeah. like the timing, and it just happened. We were right next to each other. Um, but well, that's what that's you know that's one thing just to say that I it's an interesting thing that I don't. It'd be interesting to see what other dealers think. But I've kind of kind of changed my approach with coins a little bit, where I don't crack nearly as many coins out as I did before because the market now appreciates and will pay a premium for you know coins that are really really nice 100 and and it's uh i'd rather have a boxes of coins that look like upgrades and i would coins that look like they just got upgraded and uh, you know it's I, I i think the freshness appeal is really you can capitalize on that and then you don't go through the disappointment of you know downgrades no grades you know sideway grades grading fees all that kind of stuff and um, i think that's part of that i've changed a lot of my strategy the last year or two because of that yeah that's you're speaking my language. We do the same thing, you know, so I, a lot of times too, the spreads just don't merit cracking anymore, right? It's very, right. you know, you just, when you get to four, three, four, five, if I have nice coins in three, four, five, I grade them the way that I see them. I, right. I mean, I price them the way price I see them, them right? right? So I just, I don't get into the grading game. I love the sticker game. I love CAC, obviously. Um, but I love both grading services. I love PCGS and NGC. I mean, I use them both for, for a lot of my coins and I don't get into those four, five, six times submissions. I'm out of that game. I don't have time to keep up with it. I don't want to pay the grading fees. I don't want to lose coins in shipment. I'd rather, like you said, um, I, and that's, and, and honestly here, I'll just tell you the truth. Um, I pulled probably, I think I bought 50 coins from you. I pulled 20 coins that I thought were upgrades, but sure. I paid for them. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> right? I, mean, I, mean, I, mean, I, I kind of charge a little bit, you know, yeah. and if you make an upgrade, I'm happy for you. You know, that's, exactly. that's a good thing. And I feel and, you know, the same let that, way. Yeah. Let that game go. Cause I, I just, um, you know, I, I, it's just, some guys are, that's what they do. For, that's their business plans to do that. But I think if you did a list of all the dealers who only do that, that most of them aren't very successful. Well, I interest think, rates too, right? Interest rates yeah. are not, you know, they're not, they're not sure. as friendly, the time, right? Yeah. yeah. The time so it takes to do cash is that. cash is king. You want to revolve your money. You want to, you know, want to maintain your profits. You don't want to have your profits and in inventory, especially upgrade inventory. That's a losing battle. We've seen numerous people go under over and over and over again. They don't learn the lesson. And, you know, I'd rather, well, like you said, bring 20 fresh boxes and sell 10 or 15 and go home a happy man. Right. Yeah. Some coin dealers like to gamble. That's the, that's the, that's just the gambling instinct in them. And it's, it's hard, hard to resist. That's like that's true. The, the, the coin casino that are grading services. They get excited. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, let's talk a little bit. So one thing I, I will say that I noticed is that, you know, and we've been talking about this and this has been a result, a resounding um, message on the coin shop podcast is the younger um, the younger crew, you've got this, this, this mob of, you know, maybe 50 to a hundred YNs that, you know, via Witter coin, via, um, the a and um, also got, you know, guys like you, you know, with, um, I think you were the one of the earlier ones to start it with like Maxwell and these other guys. I mean, this isn't yep. something that just started, you know, right. we had Wade Spencer with us for the last five or six years, but we weren't putting them all over the internet and doing things like that. It was just, we kind of kept it quiet, keep our interns quiet. We try to teach them as much as we can without giving up the farm. Um, but hopefully they end up being an extension of you, right? Right. Um, and that's been our approach. Um, but with Next Gen, you know, the the Gray Sheet, Amanda, they did an amazing job of putting that deal together. You had some real heavy hitters in there. You had Halpern, you had yourself in there, uh, Feigenbaum, you had... Uh, Mark Salzburg. Mark Salzburg was there. Um, you know, we were there. Who else? Um then they had a room full of YNs that were just ready. These are kids who look like they're ready to take over the business. They look like they're the next ones in line, right? It's exciting. Oh, oh it is. It's the most I've, I, I, I think I mentioned to you maybe before, but it's probably the most young people at one time that I've seen since the 70s. Uh, and even in the 70s, there weren't that many as, as there are now. And obviously, it's a, I think it's because of social media. They, they just kind of like all of a sudden they re they connect on Instagram and they do a little deal and they say, Hey, this is fun. And you know, they like the action and then they kind of, the, the smart ones, the, the uh, cream rises to the surface. And all of a sudden yeah. you start seeing them at show, coin shows. And then the, the one fellow, uh, Mark uh, Vizzoni works, works with me. He's a, he's a, uh, it's going to be a sophomore at UK. And he went to the Witter uh, thing. He went to the a, &A summer seminar and he also went to the stacks uh, internship. And, uh, 
I met he'd him. never he'd never really been to a big coin show. Then that was kind of like the after doing those three things, then he went to the A and A. He, he was like, it's like a whole new world opened up to him. He says, it's so neat to trade coins in person instead of online. Well, <laughs> so ba- he, oh, wow. baptism by fire, right? Yeah, yeah, you got to see it. But even as <laughs> as as cool as online is, and you know, social media. But th- and that's one thing I would say that uh, you know, some people like to talk about the demise of coin shows. I, they're not going anywhere. Coin shows are still there's still so much activity and so neat to do it in person and. I, I think, you know, there may be less coin shows in the future, but uh, coin shows are still, it's kind of like uh, Las Vegas. There's You can gamble in almost any town in the country, but people still want to go to Las Vegas. Oh, it's, yeah, you've got to have coin shows. And I think, you know, I see on the horizon the next, you know, I say six to 18 months, there's going to be some really cool crossover products that come onto the market um, that are going to bring younger people to coin shows. I, I, I'm super bullish on the coin hobby. I'm, I'm, I'm very bullish on the business of that side of it. And um, I, I think there's nothing but just great things coming up. So I'm, I'm super pumped up that and I'm glad to hear you're excited as well. And one thing I noticed and I didn't, I haven't even brought this up to anybody, but did you notice eBay, eBay's booth there? Yeah. Oh yeah. They were, they, uh, they obviously are, uh, they took a big presence here. So they, they realized that I, th- I think it's because they know they got some competition too. Like I saw Watt Notton was there, which I don't even know what it was until I saw people talking about it there. Right. But that's, that's probably breathing it down their neck. And I think it's a big category. Coins are a big category. So they, uh, they put some, uh, someone said they had a product that competes with Watt Notton. I don't know what it is, but it's called they, eBay live eBay live. Okay. eBay live. Yeah. So right, it's their answer right. to whatnot. And it's right, actually, right. it's actually, we've been using it here, um, in us coins and we love it. Uh, okay. Their support side is easy to deal with, um, but I was just I was impressed with the the stance. When you get a company like eBay that literally goes from having one small table to that huge area, yeah, you know, to me that's telling you something, and it's it's really really good for the hobby. It you validates know? the category. Oh, exactly, exactly. So I didn't know if you took notice of that, and I wanted oh, to yeah. hear what your opinion was. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. And you know, I think that's that's one of the reasons I like A and A so much. It, and you know, there's been a lot of noise in the last year or so with like, oh, this show's bigger, fun show's bigger. A and A is still the place where you know people roll out their ideas. They have, oh, yeah. you know, I, I walk around I'm like, oh, what's, you know, I saw what you know Ian Russell was doing with uh, my collect, and you know, just all the, it's it's still the place. And also the U.S. I mean, sorry, the U.S. Mint did. A, I, I think that goes should be really mentioned. The U.S. Mint did a awesome job there. I, I mean, agree. You know, Ventress Gibson uh, sat at her table there for for the whole show. The, yep. You know, the U.S. Mint director was at our coin show for a, a week. That's that's pretty impressive commitment to, to the hobby. Um, they had show releases there. People were over there, you know, cheering on the drawings they had. So, um, I mean, it's, I, I, you know, in my opinion, a and no matter where they have it, it's still, it's still the coin show of the year. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, it, you're right. And what a great point, Jeff, uh, to have, you know, to have her there. She was there. She was nice. She was easy. Everybody was, she was talking mm-hmm. to everybody, a lot of communication. When you see the U S mint make that type of, uh, uh, you know, spend that, that capital on presence. And then again, yeah. when a company like eBay sets up there with presence, now I didn't really look at whatnots thing. I saw them there, but again, um, I think those are I think those are the underlying things that some people take for granted or hobby. It's hard for me to it's hard for me to leave the A and A. Sure, I mean maybe the retail presence wasn't what some people expected, and that's you know, that's not my words. Those are just what I heard on the floor. But you have to be happy about what you see in the hobby. You've got to right. be you got to be excited about the things that are going underneath because when start when big people start when big companies and corporations start putting money into things like that. Right. I mean that's an, eBay's eBay didn't have a very small setup. That was an expensive setup. That oh, wasn't yeah, tens I mean, of thousands. That, that was a commitment, right? And um, you know. Um, um, like you said, uh, the U.S. Mint, they had a really, they had a great exhibit. You had the Tyrant collection there again. Um, oh, that was awesome. Man, how cool is that? Yeah. Um, I think amazing. I talked to someone, it's really interesting that, you know, most of these people have, that spent, you know, there's probably four or five of them now that have spent hundreds of millions on their coin collection. None of them, you know, share their collection like that. That's that's pretty impressive that he's, he's obviously not doing it to sell the coins. He's never, I don't think he wants to sell them. He's just doing it to share the collection. Exactly. And he spent... I mean, I, he probably spent a hundred thousand on that exhibit wow. and he's just doing it just, you know, it's probably pocket change to him, but still it's neat that you, you know, that, you know, people, even as advanced people like myself, you go up and say, wow, that's, I can't, that's so cool to be able to see that. And especially the way he's got it thematically done and chronologically. And um, it, it was an enjoyment for me as a numismatist to be able to see that. I'm glad he's sharing his collection. 
my question is, is that how many, um, so it was the world coins, um, but, but the year before, or maybe two years prior, it was his U S collection. Um, I wonder how many coins, I wonder how many coins he bought looking at the hundred greatest coins book, knowing that he needed to be able to use. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, I, my, my, my one claim to fame is uh, Deloitte Hansen told me that he started coin collecting because of the hundred greatest book. So he's also spent hundreds of millions on his coin collection. So yep. they, I do take pride in that. I, I don't know about uh, Dan O'Dowd. I'm not sure what the guy hit. I think he started really, I think he got into U.S. coins later. I think he was more of an ancient and uh, world buyer with the Goldbergs. Okay. And I think later he discovered uh, U.S. coins. But uh uh, you know, definitely Doy Hansen told me that. So that was that was kind of cool to hear somebody that, that had an impact like that. Well, I'll give you a cool story. So I sold a seventeen ninety four dollar to my my big customer uh, because it was on the cover of you had the the, the yeah. Oswald coin yeah. on the cover, and I sold a, an XF forty to my customer because of that book. Yeah. So if you don't have a copy uh, in your coin shop or multiple copies of the hundred greatest coins, buy ten or twenty of them to give them to your big customers. I'm not. To, um, this is not a suggestion. I'm telling you, you must do it. If you're listening <laughs> to this to podcast it. and you have a pot and you have a coin shop and you don't have at least 20 to give to your customers, you're wrong. Yeah, it, mean, it, you're it inspires people to buy coins because every coin has a story to tell. And um, when you read the stories on them, it's like, wow, that's a cool story. It makes you really realize why you should buy it. It's uh, it's the stories that sell coins. I mean, otherwise, they're pieces of metal. They don't mean anything. Right there. And, yeah, I'm really, I'm really proud of that book, and it's in the fifth edition now, and yep. uh, probably do sixth edition pretty soon. Yeah, and and when you're when you're picking the hundred greatest coins, what's the process to doing that? Well, that's an interesting question because in the past, what we do is I would send, I would compile a list of like 150 to 200 coins, and I send it to the PNG membership to vote, and uh, it, that's kind of that process has worked really, really well. I, I had a talk with Ian Russell recently about because um, you know he's got a couple of the big mega co collectors, and it's uh, what is considered the great U.S. coins now may be defined a little bit differently in the next uh, edition and going forward because you know there's coins before that were two hundred thousand you know ten years ago that are selling for two or three million now. It's mostly the mega quality coins like these proof gold coins from the Bass sale. Of course. Uh, some well, I mean, I was involved. Just, just just a good story. I mean, a guy about four months ago called me up and from Canada, and he said a coin shop in Canada discovered an 1870 CC10, and um, he had it in his pocket. And he said he was at the coin show, and I said, well, if you can buy it for this, you know, do this, and you know, you know, we tried to help him out. And then he said he called later. Well, the guy I don't think he wants to sell it, but he needs help getting it graded, et cetera, et cetera. So they sent it to me, and I got the coin. Uh, we got it got it graded and then uh we uh, is consigned to stacks bowers it's an 1870 cc 10. wow and when the guy had it at the coin show he said well i offered him 100 grand for it and he said he's thinking about it and i'm like well if you can get that it'd be a really good deal and uh they put in the Saks bower sale that sold a couple of days ago it, it ended up grading au 58 cac it sold wow. for 1.1 million yeah i saw it yeah. So, you know, it's, so what's great coins coin now, too. I know, but what's great coins now, I mean, you know, does that coin deserve to be in the hundred greatest, you know, so that's a, you know, there'll be, because of the staggering price that some individual coins are bringing now, we have to maybe re-examine kind of like what, what constitutes really the hundred greatest now. So that might, might be, be an interest. I always enjoy it because I, I love digging into it and thinking about it. And, but in general, in the past, I've kind of had the I like having the PNG uh, membership, which are the you know the largest dealers in the country, kind of weigh in on it as a as a vote thing, and that kind of also it gets people um, invested in the in the process. And you know, I, I got to vote in it. Your name's in the book, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, but I I do want to re-examine the uh, a, a little bit about what what really makes the great coins now, because there's you know uh, there's so many coins that have bought millions in the last couple of years that are you know you don't even think about. No, it's it's an amazing yeah, it's amazing and and. I like the way that when you when you're taking this data, the new data that's coming in, the book is going to evolve with, you know, with what's going on, right? It's not just here. This is how we do it. And we don't care what happened, you know, because some right. of these guys, they get that way. It's like, no, right. this is the way I've done it. I've done it for 49 A and A's in a row. I'm not going to do it any different. No, right. it's listen, hey, I'm going to open it up to people. I'm going to take what's going on. And if things need to be reimagined, then that's how the business evolves. That's how you get people involved because they want to see transparency. 
Yeah. Right. They yeah. don't want to see fire and brimstone. They want to see, they want to see transparency and they want to see somebody looking to, Hey, you know, this is a trend. Let's, let's get on top of this trend. I mean, what a cool story. I mean, a 70 CC, I mean, in, yeah, in the so someone's cool. pocket, you know, it's a yeah, coin that grades 58 CAC right. coin that brings 1.1 million. I mean, what a story <laughs> that story needs to be told. I mean, it was I, in I, Canada, I, you know, sitting in Canada for all those years. It's really I'm kind of it's a wild story. Uh, I'm going to ask Olivia to find that story because I, I think those are the type of stories that need to be covered. And, right. um, you know, we need to get that out because, you know. Yeah. Well, the, I, well, the coolest story I, we didn't even bring up. I didn't thought to even bring up to you. But the craziest story is that the guy who uh, came to see me a few months or, you know, several months ago with 800 co gold coins he found in a cornfield in Kentucky. Wow. The, amazing the, the great kentucky horde so that was wow uh, one of the craziest things in my 50 years of coins nice. so it was a, a wild 800, thing wow 800 gold coins he found on a cornfield in kentucky so it let's, was it was nuts let's, let's talk about dr Geinfeld, uh dr feingold a little bit um okay what an amazing person she is yeah she's we're really lucky that, that we have such an advocate in in a national museum uh because uh, in the museum of american history which is so important because uh, there's, you know, there's coin exhibits here, like a a has one and a &S has one. The Smithsonian gets almost 5 million people a year to go through the museum. So it has a, you know, the coins have a great footprint there and she is really a great advocate. She keeps it relevant. Um, she's involved in it all the time. And, I, you know, you came to the event we had at the a and and you saw you know, what she's doing I and mean, she's, She's uh, it, it's just really good. We have somebody. I mean, she even got an exhibit for kids in the museum uh, established, which, uh, you know, in the museum rank in history, as you know, every square inch is, you know, that's valuable real estate. And uh, she was able to carve that out and, and have that there because of her influence, which I think is really, really fantastic. So she's I've been working with her for nine and a half years and um, she's been a real pleasure to work with and has done a great job uh, promoting the hobby and, uh, and, make, and keeping really coins relevant on a national stage which is a it's a big deal for us cool um is is that something jeff you feel like um like looking back at your at your career and like to me you know and, and dealing and doing business and more business with you and talking to you more you you're, you seem like you're 40 years old on the floor again right so i don't well, thanks but my and I'm not, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to suck up, but I'm, I'm getting to a point. That point is, is that what is, what's next? Like, what do you feel like when you look back on your, your storied career in numismatics and the, and the, in the legacy that you leave, what is it that you want to be known for? What is it that you want to be number one on that legacy list? Tell me what that is for Jeff Garrett. Well, for, for me, I, I, as I transition, as I get older and spend less times, like maybe going to, no, instead of going to three shows a month, I do, you know, cut back at some point. I do like writing and I like sharing my knowledge with people. And uh, I think it, it really, that has the longest impact because when I, you know, if you just take one person and you can move them up to one level because you've got them excited about something or, you know, share, sharing my life and my hobby and, and my knowledge. And, and, and also, I, I got to mention, I think anybody who, that may be watching this who does any writing realizes that you actually learn by teaching. Like when I uh, right now, I'm working on the uh, third edition of my, my uh, Golden Encyclopedia with Ron Gutt. You know, I'll have to deconstruct and study and, and, and get into it. And I still like learning. I, I come to work every day and I love learning new things about numismatics. So for me, it's I, I want to be known as uh, that if you ever want to know something about a coin, you know, if you ask Jeff, he probably knows it or, or we'll find it out for you. So I like to be known for knowledge, I think, right. as much as anything. And because, uh, you know, that's why I've been on the a and you know, board and as president and PNG board and president. It's all about, you know, sharing what, you know, it's it's I think I think you you know, by giving back, you, you get so much. And, uh, you know, it's like these YNs. I love, you know, inspiring and telling about stuff and maybe giving them some uh, advice. And so I think it's all about knowledge and sharing the knowledge. And that just pays uh, dividends, you know, I think going forward. Yeah. When we were when we were given the opportunity to go to summer seminar and teach uh, the business on how to be a coin dealer, um, <clears throat> excuse me, my my experience is something I don't mind sharing, but in terms of how to do it in a scholastically or to, to reach people on a scholastic level is not something that I was necessarily prepared for, right. but I also wasn't prepared to say no and not give back to the hobby that's given us so much. Right. Um, but you're right. You get a certain sense of gratification from 
really locking in and trying to teach somebody something because before it comes out of my mouth, it needs to be fact checked and it needs to be accurate, right? Right. And, and yeah, you learn a lot by doing that process. You, you learn a lot really quick and you learn to build confidence. And then once that confidence comes in and then everything else just sells and it's beautiful. Um, right. But you've done an amazing job of getting, um, you know, obviously, and in, in being the author of these books. These aren't just books, you know, to make books. These are books that actually help, and they're right. great tools, and they're big, they're vibrant, they've got, you know, pretty pictures, they've got really easy to read, you know, language. They're just such a, so well written. Um, I was at the ANA uh, at in Denver. I was actually at the ANA. I don't know what they call it, like the bookstore or whatever. But I ended up buying every greatest coin book there was there because well, I was like. Funny. Well, because this is hot, but I had Great. never heard of the ancients or the other ones. I was like, well, let me buy Great. them because shit, right. these coins could be worth 5X in 10 years. Who knows? Let me right. start. Right. I wanted to do research to buy coins for myself. Right. So thank you very much for that. I mean, I yeah. love them. They're cool. They, they're they great. They're great functions for the store. They're yeah. great for the collector. Customers right. love them. They do. Yeah. The customers they, they they absolutely, absolutely love them. them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Yeah. I also, also, I'm proud of the Red Book. Um, I've gotten, uh, we're getting ready to start Red Book season because we have to do the pricing. I can... October, November, December, and uh, uh, I, I recently did a talk, at, well, at Summer Seminar was there, I did a talk with uh, Ken Brissett, who will be 95 next month, who is still an amazing person. He's probably, amazing. Yeah. Oh, he's unbelievable. unbelievable. I talked it's to cool. him for 20 minutes, I think, at the Summer Seminar, and yeah. man, he's, I mean, he was 70 in the way that he was talking yeah, to me. Yeah, he's, he's, he's crazy. Awesome. So we did a little talk on the history of the Red Book, and it kind of gave me more of an appreciation of how, and, you know, these days, the Red Book is not the it's not the pricing guide that everyone like. Oh, what's it you know in there? But it's so much basic information that it's the you know, if you have if someone comes in and, and you say I'm getting ready to start a coin collecting, you give them that book. It's the book you start them with, and it's it's uh, they sell hundreds of thousands of copies a year. So it's you know it's the most widely distributed book in, on coins, and I I take it you know after having it handed off to me by Ken Brissett, I I just I uh, I'm honored and also I. It's a, uh, I look at it as a, as a big responsibility to keep that, that brand strong and uh, to make people want to have, you know, we work, try to add things to it, make it uh, better every year um, and, and make it, you know, make sure it stays relevant. Because it when you talk about numismatics to most people, you, you know, one of the things, first things they think about is a red book. And I want to keep it that way for the, for the next generation. We give away hundreds a year. Uh, we yeah. buy hundreds for the store. Um, yeah. If yep. we could buy more, we would buy more. I think yeah. I think they tell us like, hey guys, you're buying too much. Yeah, um, it's no, it's a great book. Um, well, Jeff, listen, do you have anything for us? Um, you know, I, I appreciate I appreciate what you're doing. I think you're actually connecting to the, you know, social media is an extension of what's really growing this hobby. I think it uh social media has uh had a giant impact on their hobby. Uh things like what you're doing and other people are doing. And I admire that, you know, you took off the time to go to A and and teach and give back a little bit, but I, I can. I know this has probably helped your business, but I think it's also a giant give back. And I, I, I admire what you're doing, and I think it's good to uh, be that you've got a, you're a big part of this growth, this new avenue of growth that we have in the hobby. Well, I appreciate that, and it's just like you. It takes a team, right? It's uh, yeah. You know, individual and individual efforts are nice, but you know when you can put it together and you can get you know 20, 30 people on the same page, um, and that's that's when great things happen, and that's what we're looking forward to. So I really yeah. appreciate those comments, Jeff, and thank you very much for taking your time. Um, we did we did a podcast before we had an error, but let me tell you, this one was a hundred times better anyway. I appreciate yeah. your time. Yeah, yeah. I, think I do good. too. Yeah, I think it's good coming home from an A and A because we all have a, a fresh perspective on what's going on in the hobby. So it's great. Well, we're fired up, right? I mean, yeah. you know, I've got you know six or seven boxes of noobs that I'm stoked about. You know, like you know, I'm pricing right. coins. People are calling. Where's your noobs? Where's your noobs? You know, it's it, that's what you want. That's when you yeah. know the hobby's good when people are crying about noobs. Right? It's that it's psychological warfare. I told you. It, you're right. I think <laughs> yeah, we need you and I need to collaborate on a book. I think I yeah. think I've got some pretty good stuff on that too. Yeah, that's great. Well, I appreciate having me on. I think Matt had a couple yeah, questions. Yeah, Jeff, I want okay. to ask you a question real quick before sure. we get off for our listeners. Yeah. So uh, you started the Bluegrass Coin Club. Mm -hmm. uh, what motivated you to do that? And and uh, how did you get into doing well, that? Well, what motivated me to do that was uh, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you if it hadn't been for coin clubs uh, back in the early 70s in the Clearwater, Florida area. So when I was a wow. kid, you know, 10, 11 years old, um, and I was lucky I grew up in Florida because there were clubs everywhere. There was like the the Clearwater Coin Club, the St. Pete Coin Club, Tampa Coin Club, 
uh, Largo Coin Club, and there were a couple of mentors that would come pick me up. My dad was a, uh, worked on the road as a construction worker, and it was never home. And they picked me up, took me to coin clubs, and it really it was the you know that was the you know the seed of my of my numismatic career. I started trust hustling coins at coin clubs and things like that. So very very uh, grateful that coin clubs were around when I was a you know, kid. So like. 30 years ago, I think now, I, when I was in Lexington, I started the Bluegrass Coin Club. And uh, just because I think it's just so important to, on that, that's a, that's a really serious grassroots because you got people that know, you know, starting from zero. And uh, I can give you, a, it's a clearly changed his lives. Uh, uh, Maxwell Gregory, as you mentioned earlier, his mom, he was homeschooled and he started going to the Bluegrass Coin Club and he was nine years old, which was, I guess, about 12 years ago now. And now he's one of the most up and coming uh, one rare coin dealers. Yeah, and, one of my uh, favorite. So man. I changed I like his Maxwell. life. <laughs> yeah. Maxwell's cool. I like he's a yeah. good guy. He's a good yeah. dude. Super well spoken. You know, very very honest. And no, I mean that's ex that's a yeah. great that's a great 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 story. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, for the new listeners out there, uh, find a local coin club and uh, find a way to get there. Yeah, get, get involved. Get involved get and involved. Be a, then do it because it's uh, they don't happen. You know, usually about five percent of the people do all the work, but you need those five percent of people to keep it going. And uh, we get fifty people a month now at our club, and we've got oh, some. Wow. I've I've had a couple of new young guys that are that I get through the club that are even another crop of them that come through. So they actually do change lives. So it's it's hard. It's it sounds overstated, but I don't think it is. No, it's inspiring. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's inspiring. It I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. All right, Jeff, we're going to get off. Okay. We appreciate your time. Thank you so much. It was Guys, awesome. Jeff Garrett, um, awesome guy. Thanks so much for your time. We really appreciate it. It was fun. Thanks, All guys. Right, Jeff. Take care. See you guys. All right, see you.